Hello, and welcome to the Be Purely Balanced podcast. I'm Dr. Crystal Couture, and today I'm here with Sasha Fossa. Sasha is a holistic sexual empowerment coach, educator, and healer, offering a combination of modalities called Sacred Temple Arts, designed to get your sex and love life you really want, partnered or not. Sessions and classes are offered in person and virtual. Sasha has a master's in health, arts, and sciences, and is an advanced certified tantric educator, planned parenthood certified sex educator, holistic healing practitioner, and licensed erotic blueprint coach. Her passion is increasing consciousness through sexual awakening and pleasure. Hello, Sasha. Hello, Crystal. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. So a sexual empowerment coach, educator, and healer, how does one get into that field? (laughs) I love that question. Um, It really chose me over time. Uh, I really have, you know, discovered as many of us that walk this healing path do that our own healing is is the best medicine. So our wounds become the healing for ourselves and then to bring into the world as well. Mm. Uh, So I started out um, at a young age, very alive and inquisitive and full of energy and um, aware of energy and a very sensitive soul and um, had a ton of trauma. And it went, you know, it was um, family trauma, it was sexual trauma, it was Uh, By the time I was an adolescent, I was um, really probably could have been diagnosed with complex trauma and Mm -hmm. was just doing the best that I could um, to survive in in what ways I could. And things eventually led to when I was in college, um, my father died suddenly. And that Mm -hmm. was kind of this tipping point for me where I actually um, I chose to try to leave the planet. Like it was, I was only 22 and um, I had had enough here. Um, I just didn't see a way out of the pain that I was in, the extreme pain. And I won't go into the whole story about it, um, but essentially instead of dying, I had a miraculous awakening to Um, like a kind of miracle rebirth, like death and rebirth experience. When I, it was a full blown, blown, what some people might understand as Kundalini awakening. So what changed in me was that suddenly I could see energy everywhere. And I had this sense of peace and this connection to everything. Where before I didn't really have a belief system in anything, but Mm -hmm. now suddenly I knew that we were all light, that we were connected somehow that there was this matrix energy that there was something so pure and beyond concept of that i'd been raised with of this idea of this kind of big man in the sky <laughs> wow and yeah so i went on a journey um i started at 22 studying everything i could around world religion spirituality um went you know in, in academia and also on my own Um, went to an esoteric school, did uh, 20 to 30 different certifications in healing arts. It was really like, um, it's still my journey. I'm still always taking the classes, integrating more healing paths. Um, Mm -hmm. But that was what really was the turning point. And what got me into the the sexual empowerment piece was that I I ended up in a tantric workshop um, in my 20s. I saw when I was out there reaching for everything I could for healing, I saw a flyer that said sacred sexuality workshop. And I thought, I've never seen those two words together before. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All the classes I was taking in spirituality and all the meditations and everything I was doing, nothing was addressing sexuality. Sexuality was like, you know, positive type of thing and just working with the purity of our upper chakras and it was actually you know said in numerous of the retreats I was on that the more evolved you got the less that you needed um to actually have sex and Mm. here I am I'm in my 20s I'm meditating with women in their 60s there was a big difference there (laughs) (laughs) around that and 
and, and what to do with that. And so I went into Tantra and back then, um, I'm so grateful that things are really changing in the Tantra field. Back then, um, it was kind of a free for all and there was more of a sense of orgies. Um, I mean, I'll just be you know, honest about it. It was traumatizing. Um, the lack of boundaries and uh, the kind of situation I found myself in in intensive tantric trainings. There's a lot changing in that, and I'm grateful now to have um, so much awareness that I can keep people really safe on that path um, and help to guide them because there's a lot that um, can go astray with um, gurus and sexual energy and so forth. Yeah. So. Yeah, so the tantric path, um, I, I've studied sexual tantra, but I've also studied the white tantra. And I personally believe that um, everybody who actually wants to learn the art of tantra, you must learn white tantra before you do the sexual tantra. White tantra always comes first. White tantra is essentially the Dalai Lama practices white tantra. Right? Mm. Um, he's celibate, but he runs the same energies of masculine and feminine and connection of them in his body. So we learn to do that first. And then we learn how to safely play with another in that way with the energies. Right. So the idea for, for the work, the way that you teach it is really the connection within oneself before yes. you begin to share that connection with someone else. Yes. And it's always about our primary relationship is with us, with ourselves, mm. with our bodies. To be the best lover, you have to become your own best lover first. Mm. And that is so missing in our culture around the things that we're taught and everything's about the external, especially for women, uh, you know, satisfying your partner and so forth. And um, yeah, it's uh, so much around sexuality is the opposite of what we've been taught is actually the, the, the reality of how our bodies work and um, what we need to undo and sort of relearn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What a, uh, what a journey. I, it, it's palpable that mm -hmm. your journey had light and dark phases yeah. um, and that they led you to a place where you're sharing something that makes people really, really vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're sharing it in a way that they can grasp on and relate to it and feel comfortable exploring a natural part of humanity. Yeah, well said. Yeah. I believe oh. you know, sex is as natural as eating, that breathing, elimination. It's a necessary part of life for all of us. Yeah, um, And if we learn to actually integrate it into our lives as such and to talk about it and to educate about it, you know, if we cared as much like around what we eat in a day as like getting our um, sexual and sensual and uh, um, relationship needs that we would have a very different planet where people were certainly not so starved in so many ways. Right, yeah. right. So the question I have is is really about what are, the, what are the questions people need to ask themselves? What are the conversations people need to have with themselves mm -hmm. to start getting the vibe of where their sexual health is? That's really great. Yeah, I like that. And too, you know, sexual health, right? So much of um, what we're taught around sex is the opposite of actually how to be healthy sexually because it has so much to do with... Um, putting energy out and effort in a way that's, and especially as we age, what the um, ancient the conflicts knew and really the key of this unlocking sexuality is you can be the fountain of youth if you cultivate the energy. Mm. So I would ask, you know, anybody at any age, though, to start with, do you love your body? Mm. How connected are you to your body? You can't have a good sex life and connect with yourself or another if you do not care for and love your body. And no matter what size or whatever is going on in your body, you can love your body. And you'll have less issues with your body if you just start right now loving your body exactly as it is. Um, as a female in this culture, I did a lot of work around 
um, body image personally and academically as I spent easily 30 years of my 40, almost 43 here in absolute um, war and hating my body. Mm. And what a change it is when you actually come into your body and feel safe there and learn to enjoy whatever softness, whatever is going on in it, whatever is happening for you, just to learn to sink in and love your body. And especially, this again, as we age, it's not going to get better the more you hate your body. Right. <laughs> it's critical. And I think pretty much everyone can remember a time looking back as a child. They at least have some memory where they were perhaps playing outside or woke up in the morning and just kind of bounced out of bed, right? We do know how to love our bodies. It's taken from us. At a very young age, we're taught to disassociate and not to love our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, so to regain that, I would say, is, is a great question first, and I can help people with that. I help people all the time with that, um, how, to, how to get more embodied. You know, and if that's healing trauma too, of course, then that needs to be addressed. Mm. So there's a rewriting of patterns. There's a rewriting of energy to get us into a state of embodiment, to get us into a state of, of liking our bodies and then loving our bodies, right? Yeah. yeah. Once, once we get there, then maybe we can have a conversation about how do we feel sexually? I don't know. Yes, exactly. And I would say even to get there, to start with, um, to start to feed your body pleasure, right? Mm. So much of our experience on this plane um, of existence in this world is pleasure last, um, get to work, you know, pleasure is a kind of foo-foo thing. Um, no, pleasure is actually something the body requires mm. and should be fed daily. So just to begin to not hate your body, I would just suggest for anybody that has body issues, and just in general, we all need to be doing this. Add some pleasure to your day consciously. Start to like, like be on a pleasure diet. I am going to mm -hmm. as pleasure an essential ingredient, and I'm going to start to infuse it into my life every day a little bit more in different ways that I can, right? I love that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because when we're, we're doing so much healing and we're, we're suffering in so many ways in this reality, if we learn to have real pleasure where it comes from within and we're enjoying it in our bodies, this is what opens up our libido, right? This mm -hmm. is what helps us to actually understand, oh, well, now I'm starting to get turned on in life because there's some more pleasure happening. My body's starting to know what it likes. Oh, now I'm starting to get to feel a little sexy. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. That makes so much sense. I love it. I've, I've never thought of, you know, um, life and sexuality quite in this way before. So thank you. This is, yeah, I love this. I love the way that you say, you know, the idea of getting turned on in life because life is, is that for us. It is activating those pleasure centers, right? Yeah, it should be. If it's not, then I'd ask the question, why and what can I do to open up more to doing that? And you would use the word vulnerability. And, you know, it's wonderful Brene Brown's work on vulnerability and to start to realize that's something that our society has been, oh, don't be vulnerable, be strong. You can't have intimacy and you can't have true sexual awakening or healing unless you get vulnerable. So we want to see vulnerability as a key piece here too, and the deeper levels of intimacy, healing, and to have pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love this conversation. I love your little laughs because it's like, you know what? This is, this is what sex should evoke. It should, these conversations should be like this. They should be fun. They should be light. They should be yes. evoking something within us that, you know, sparks that joy, sparks some, um, 
light sparks some awakening, sparks the essence, right? Yes. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> it's so good. It's so yeah. good. So I want to talk more about, you know, like yeah. the work that you do, because you work with individuals, but you also work with couples. Yes. Mm-hmm. So do. yeah. Why don't you, why don't you take us through what, what this sure. is like? Yeah. It's a new thing all the time. I've had, um, you know, clients have ranged in age from 20s to oldest was um, a man of 89. Um, I've had um, surprisingly quite a few men that were um, virgins in their 40s. Um, And, uh, you know, just everything from couples to couples that are exploring different types of relationship or conscious um, uncoupling. Um, A lot of experiences with women that are anorgasmic, or so they think, right? Um, or I've had some severe trauma and they've tried a lot of other things so I'm not able to unlock the spirit from their own body. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's so, it's such a wide range. But essentially I see couples and individuals um, either in my office or I work virtually. I can see people and I can do my work anywhere that you are. So mm-hmm. you don't have to come to me in your report. Mm-hmm. Um, I do offer a free consultation for anybody who wants to sign up for one that you can find on the website and my sessions are you know either one hour virtually or two hours in person or longer immersions if you really want to do a program I offer many programs and so some of those some of those programs may look like is um what I call best sex and love life right so we we take a dive into what is the person's vision or couple for their best sex and love life. Mm. And how do we get them there? And so each should have their own individual vision. And then to, if you're in a partnership, you create one together. So here we are at the beginning of a new year, right? And people make resolutions and they make goals and they have lists of what they want for their business and what they want. What about your sex and love life? Mm-hmm. That's really where I come in. Let me help you you know, guide you and teach you, whether it's, you know, um, sex education, you need, um, a new, you know, healing trauma, creating a plan for what you want to get in your relationship, exploring different play gla- playgrounds of sexuality. I've recently become an erotic blueprint coach, and this is a whole other dive into programs. Um, this is, I studied through a teacher named Jaya. And essentially, this particular stream of coaching that I do allows people to really find out if you don't know what the love languages are for Gary Chapman's work, I always encourage people to look into what the five love languages are. Yes. Well, the erotic blueprints are Jaya's five sex languages. Oh. And brilliant. And you can find on my website tons of information and a link to the free quiz. So that you can find out what your particular uh, sex languages are. <laughs> yeah, That's it's so, cool. so yummy. It's so yummy, and it's so easy once to once we have um, this map, right, of uh, with with yourself or with your partner of what these with these sex languages are, because generally, just like with the love languages. Oops, we don't have the same ones. We are speaking literally different languages. Yeah. Completely different languages. How do we learn our partner's language? Mm. How do we learn to actually feed them in that language? Yeah. Right? How do we learn to feed ourselves in our in how we actually want to feel, whether it's love languages, loved, or sex languages, erotically alive? Right. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful yeah. work. That's yeah. really cool. It's so juicy. I am thrilled to be um, <laughs> the offering that work in addition to my, my personal best sex and love life. Stuff. So, yeah, so those are kind of the two streams, best sex and love life, erotic blueprints. Um, and then there's another piece that I've been working with is a program I call Education, right? Because mm-hmm. so many of us don't understand our own erotic selves and how to bring it out to the world, and how to enjoy it in general. So the education program is kind of like, all right, let's look at it. What we're going to do is holistic. We're going to look at all levels of your life, right? Not just sex is one piece, right? Yeah. But so the sexification is um, 
want to find out what actually turns you on, what is feels good to you around what's sexy, and then start to like create your whole, you know, to like feng sex your house. <laughs> feng shui. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. Oh, you've got a way with words, girl. Yeah, to work on every level. And again, all these can be done um, virtually. So if you can't come in person, but um, I work with different, you know, with with um, everybody is a customized, you know, experience um, from the sessions we do to what's different about me is that um, I provide an intensive um, home play program to every client um, and couple. So you leave my office with all the um, with all of the directions, resources, and things. Well, actually, I email it the next day. But everything that you need to start your path and to do practice, right? Right. So it's a it's a great yeah. way for people to sort of come in, spend time with you, or connect virtually, and then like take it within their own space and really translate it from the healing session to life, which is yeah. super important. Yeah, yeah. To put it right into practice. And part of what I, how I charge is in between the sessions, you have access to me, mm -hmm. right? So I can t help tweak your home play. I want to know how it's going. I want to follow up. Um, so there's a conversation going on in session support. Um, and I'll just, you know, I really have to say, so what's different too about what I do is I'm, I'm trained in the tantric sexual arts and I can't legally do them. <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of people do, a lot of people are out there, um, from the schools that I've been in and they're doing illegal, um, sexual massage work and so forth. Um, I keep my business, I keep your clothes on in my business, right? Yeah. Uh, there is hands-on energy and body work but everything is spoken on your home play program is the really sexy stuff that's going to be you get to do it in the privacy of your own home you have all the resources you need to yeah uh, but you don't need me right there holding your hands i'm right. doing it virtually and you've got your instructions with you <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a great thing to distinguish, and I, I I think that's super important because there there are these boundaries when when you step into this role as the healer or the the educator, right? That you that it is important to teach, but it's also important to maintain your own uh, boundaries and your own individuality and and do things that are simulating sexually for you with the people that you would choose, which probably wouldn't be your clients. Exactly. Yeah. I won't be with my clients. Yeah. My clients safe and have them get to have their own experience. Of things, right. You know? And it's a great point because a lot of times, you know, I get men um, and I actually have it on my website now. I have like a funny way of saying, so, you know, when you come to see me, you won't get, your traditional happy ending massage right? <laughs> that a lot of men are looking for because a lot of tantric is actually do that work but you will instead get the ha if you stick with me as a coach you will get the happy ending of having the better sex love life all around right yeah. that you yeah. want to have yeah so yeah. I have nothing against like anything else anybody's doing but um, I think it's more and more important that in this day and age that we have very clear boundaries and rules around our types of um, offering and who absolutely we are, you know yeah. um, and, and be very aligned with um, uh, with with the safety of that you know and that also goes with um, obviously with sexuality there's a lot of trauma yeah that comes up and so I'm not a trauma therapist I'm going to refer you to a trauma therapist to be a trauma therapist yeah but yeah. I am going to work with you with energy and body work in other ways and, you know, and, and do what I can. But absolutely, like, I'm not claiming to be a trauma therapist. Anybody that I have a trauma-informed practice, but yeah. I'm not a trauma therapist. And anybody that's out there trying to claim that they can heal trauma who's not a therapist, you know, is doing a disservice to people, in my opinion. Yeah. So it brings up, you know, this whole idea talking about sex, talking about sexuality, talking about love, right? Yeah. There are so many different views, different perspectives, different beliefs about what is sex, what is sexuality, what is sexy, what is love, what is passion, what is pleasure. Yeah. 
so as, as a healer, you're in this role where you're, you're hearing lots and lots and lots of different beliefs and opinions and thought processes. So you have to be in a space where you're so non-judgmental. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Like yeah. I, I, I can't <laughs> even imagine. As, yeah. As long as it's safe and consensual, whatever you want, you yeah. know, <laughs> whatever you want, whatever your thing is, that's, good good for you you know you should have it as long as it's safe and consensual and you know you're playing in the right framework of things uh, great yeah might not be my thing but awesome (laughs) i'll help you get there i'll help you find you know it's wonderful that i've lived such an open life i have a lot of expertise um firstly and otherwise in very different um worlds around sexuality so yeah. even if they're ones I don't play in currently, um, it can help couples who might want to open up their relationships more. And for some of these, it's like, I've got a lot of kinky, but I'm afraid of it. And I don't know what that means. And, and I can help them <laughs> to open up that doorway for their own pleasure of what they're looking for and the safe ways to explore it. Right? Mm, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 That's so, so good. Um, you know what's coming what's coming to me now is the idea of living one's life in a state where you know they're really connected to themselves they're really in embodiment and also knowing who they are you know from that essence place and knowing who they are sexually right yeah and, and what is that what is that like really knowing oneself sexually what is that what does that mean? And, and yeah. does that evolve over time? And, um, you know, how, how do we navigate that journey, especially as we age, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's an excellent question. To me, it gets better as you age. <clears throat> yeah. um, you know, once you have the awareness of how to learn how to start to cultivate sexual energy, and once you love your body, finally, <laughs> once you're, or it's, still, it's always an evolving process. Right? But so is journey to me, the erotic journey, it's an evolving experience just like our own expansion of consciousness. And they go hand in hand. Mm. They're completely connected. So if we're not evolved, if we're doing all the meditation and spiritual work and we're not paying attention to our sexuality, we're, we're only going one direction and we're not grounding and creating the embodied spiritual consciousness that we could really change things on this planet with and actually be more present here with. So the, yeah, it's an evolution. I like to call it, you know, the erotic, erotic expression or erotic liberation. Mm -hmm. Um, It looks different for everyone, but it's, again, it's so amazing. Like if you you want to become an entrepreneur and so forth, you go and study, you know, and get a coach, right? right? Well, if you want to become an erotic master, Certainly, there's nothing in our culture that's going to teach you that you need to hire a coach that's done that path and is on that path still and is constantly evolving in, you know, their own practice to, to um, expand that. Yeah. But it's so different for every person, which is so beautiful because it's kind of like the same as every being has unique gifts on this planet, right? Every being's sexuality is so different. And should be expressed to its fullest, and as long as it's safe and consensual. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah. Disclaimer, safe and consensual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's it's so enlightening and so refreshing to really put this topic out there. And And as I think about it, you know, there's lots of different things that we might seek healing with, right? We might uh, get a counselor or a... Um, a psych- psychiatrist, psychologist, yep. whatever, to talk about stuff in our head. Yeah. We might go to, you know, some type of massage, body work, acupuncture, something for physical stuff, right? Yeah. And, and and very, very often sex comes up in those in those instances. Mm-hmm. Um and it, you know, there's a there's a, a way to deal with it, of course. And certainly um there may be a limitation as well on how far they can go. But I do think in perhaps the past like five or 10 years, I would say I've seen people more comfortable when they come in and, you know, my practice is a body work practice. So people being more comfortable coming in and, and talking about their, you know, 
sexual health or, or sexual lack of health. Yay. Um, At least they're talking. <laughs> they're talking. Yeah. And, and even talking about, you know, their, their bladder and bowel health as well. Cause yeah. that's all, that's all involved too. It's all wrapped up. Of um, course. So I, I think there's some awareness that's coming to the root chakra, you know, and I think yeah. it's becoming more mainstream and I really, I like that. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. So, so important. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. So Sasha, you wanted to share uh, a healing with us today. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll open the floor, the mic to you to, to share with us whatever it is that you'd like to share. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll actually just, I'd like to share is, um, you know, it's not really a visualization, uh, although those are wonderful. And you can kind of use it as a visualization if you'd like, but we're actually um, energy beings, right? We're, we're at all energy in a body. And so this really helps to connect our energy and to ground it fully, as well as to what I, what I can easily just kind of call it casually is run earth energy. Mm-hmm. So when you, if you want to heal your body and you want to, experience and awakening in sexuality one of the first things i teach is what is your connection to the earth Hmm. because the earth herself is pure sexualness if you look around at nature it is passionate it is abundant it is amazing in its procreative abilities and its um, exuberance and joy and so to start to connect yourself with your own sexuality, you want to get connected to the earth. Hmm. So we're going to just do a little practice of what it means to run earth energy. So if there's some place that you can, um, close your eyes safely and just kind of lay down or you can sit back a little bit. I encourage you just to take a couple of deep breaths. And now open up the bottoms of your feet. And again, if you don't visualize it, it's fine. You just know that when you direct energy, your body automatically does it. And you're just letting out any tension, anything you want to let go of. Open the bottom of your feet down into the earth. And it happens just like that because you intended it. And now we're going to put our attention on the center of the earth, the real orgasmic hot molten core. And you're going to send a tap root down there, and you're going to pull energy up through your feet. And just, just run, you know, flow with me here. See if you notice anything. If this is new to you, it's fine. It's happening because you're intending it and you're paying attention to it. This is how energy runs. And you run energy all day long, whether you're aware of it or not. The more you do it, the more aware you will become. The energy comes up through your legs. It's like this, you know, wonderful just yummy yummy sensual alive and it's the energy of the earth and it comes up into your genitals and just let it really play there and just feel whatever it feels like to just have this connection of your body and your sex with the planet herself And then let the energy come up a little more and into your belly and just moving all around through your belly. This is your solar plexus chakra, your will center. So it's aligning your sex and your will. And keep breathing it up into your heart chakra and the center of your body. So you just imagine it's going right up through the center of your body and through the chakras, if you're familiar with them, and into the heart and expanding. Your shoulders might go back a little bit. Just relax a little more into your being. Now you have your sex and your will and your heart all connected to the earth, running this energy. Mm-hmm. And then up into your throat, and then keep going up into your the place that's your third eye, your forehead, and then up all the way out through the top of your head and you can the energy bound around you. But I also want you to now expand your energy out. Expand, 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 expand as far as is comfortable for you. I'm not going to be just sit close by. Most it's going to be you can actually expand really far. You can expand out across the land. You can expand out across the state you're in. You can expand out across through the whole 
the whole planet actually you're that big a being that you be that has a body and what a beautiful body it is so notice when you're expanded out that you don't have judgment about your body any longer you actually have a deep connection with it and you can feel it and it feels much lighter than when you're contracted and judging your body now you're expanded 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 and you can stay expanded you can stay expanded and you can stay grounded and still connect in the earth and imagine if this feels good to you which for most it really will to actually have some self-pleasure or some love making with a partner from this expanded and grounded state so without even having to do some big meditation practice or some other form of trying to get aligned or foreplay, you can just simply connect to the earth, ground your energy into her, pull up energy from her, pull it through your entire body, pull it through all the chakras, organs, cells, everything in your body, pull it up through your body, expand out, expand out, expand out, and be that aligned, grounded, and connected with all of this orgasmic sexualness that is simply the beingness of being human in a body as an infinite being connected to the earth and connected to the cosmos. So I'll leave you with that to just allow you to, you know, consider that that might be a fun thing to do on a regular basis to um, start to get out of judgment and start to feel your body more and to run some sexualness with the earth. She really enjoys that. Mm. that was beautiful that creative energy like the essence yeah. of creation the spark of creation right that comes from the center of the earth yeah. Ooh, right it's good it's powerful and it's available all the time and it's free right <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. Oh, Sasha, this has been so great. I love that we had this conversation and are really taking the taboo out of talking about sex, talking about sexuality, and that there is help that's out there and you're serving as this great vessel for people to be with if they resonate with you. And if they do, they can get in touch with you via your website. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And your website is sacredtempleartscom Yeah. Beautiful. Lots of free videos on there. Um, tons of information and you don't just simply either find the number, call me or, or 978-309-9399. You can call me to set up a free consultation or you can actually sign up right on the website. Mm, oh, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for this offer. Thank you for this time, all of your knowledge, all of your energy. It's such a beautiful day to share together. Thank you, Crystal. It's a pleasure to be here.